This is the American groundnut. And the American groundnut has no relation to the peanut, which is also sometimes called a groundnut. No, this is a type of root. It's the root of a very interesting looking flower. And it has a lot of significance in American history, in North American history. So I'm uh, going to get into that in a minute. But first of all, I want to thank Carol for sending this to me. Carol, really appreciate it. The plant that this comes from is Apios Americana, and all parts of this plant are edible, well, pretty much. The, uh, the roots are edible, obviously, but also the flowers, the shoots, and uh, they produce little pea-like things. Uh, I believe that's actually part of the pea family. Some parts of the plant do contain some sort of toxin, though, so you have to cook them. And that includes uh, this one right here, so I'm not going to start biting into this one raw. These have a lot in common with potatoes. You know, potatoes also are something that you can't eat raw, but uh, also these are very starchy. They're supposed to taste similar to potatoes. But one thing that is different about this is that these have a lot more protein to them. There's three times as much protein in the American groundnut than there is in a potato. This was very, very important to Native Americans. In fact, it was considered to be one of their staple foods. It was boiled, fried, uh, dried out, preserved in maple syrup, and eaten as a sweet, and uh, they would dry it out and make a flour out of it as well. As I said, this root has a lot of historic significance. That's because when the first people came over to America from Europe back in 1620, a lot of them died. There was 102 people who boarded the Mayflower, but 45 out of the 102 died. And that is for a variety of things, the hardships of coming across by ship all that way, that was part of it, uh, not having proper shelter when they arrived, that was part of it. A lot of them were just, you know, dying because of the elements. But another thing was malnutrition. When people came over here and they saw all the plants and animals and stuff, they didn't know what to do. So a lot of them starved to death. Although nearly half of them died, it's very likely that the rest of them also would have followed soon after if it weren't for the help of the Wapanog tribe. This tribe shared food with them, but also taught them how to use the native plants. And this was one of the most important native plants, because this was being used as like a staple food by the Wapanog tribe. Thanksgiving, you know, the holiday, American Thanksgiving that we have here in the United States every November, this was actually a harvest festival for the Wapanog tribe. And the Wapanog tribe invited the pilgrims to attend their festival. Okay, that's how that meeting happened. Okay, and when people think about food that you have at a Thanksgiving table, you think turkey and green bean casserole, of course, pumpkin pie, uh, but you also think mashed potatoes and sweet potatoes. They did not have mashed potatoes or sweet potatoes. Uh, white potatoes, at least, those came from South America, and those were not introduced to North America until much later. Uh, but they would have had this, and this would very possibly have been boiled, maybe mashed. So when you think of you know, the next Thanksgiving party that you have, consider this being on that table. So the American groundnut uh, does come in a lot of different sizes. These ones are pretty small and also kind of knobbly. So I'm going to try to retain the most amount of flesh with these by not peeling them, but boiling them to get the skin off. Uh, first, though, uh, I'm going to separate them. As you can see, this, this little umbilical cord connecting the two, they actually like go down to the earth like, like beads <laughs> kind of going down like that. So I'm going to remove this little stem bit. Uh, could probably use a knife, but it's pretty brittle. I can do it with my fingers, just like that. Okay, so then these guys will go into a pot of boiling water. Just let those cook for probably not that long, maybe like five minutes. Okay, it has been six minutes. Six minutes, and I think that's fine. I'm going to take these out. Okay, they are cool enough to handle. So I'm going to scrape at them with a butter knife, just like this. 
I think uh, a peeler might remove some of the edible bits, and I don't want to do that. Yeah, it's coming off pretty easy. So, there we go. I'm going to take uh, two of these and boil them. This is new, clean water, okay? I don't want to use the old water because then it's going to taste kind of like dirty tasting. Uh, I'm also going to put a little bit of salt in there. And I'll let these cook for, I don't know, maybe another five minutes. Okay, I think it's been long enough, so I'm going to retrieve my boiled American ground nuts. Yeah, seems nice and soft in the middle, so I would say that these are safe to eat. I think if you were to give a piece of that to somebody, they would just think it was a potato. Um, the texture of it is a little bit different, though. It's more like, I mean, a little bit mealy? Not terribly so, but like a little bit more than a regular potato. And a little bit more uh, stodgy. But fine. Totally fine. It actually reminds me quite a bit of eating a jackfruit seed. It's a little bit more like that, where it's like chestnutty potato rather than just like straight up potato, if that makes any sense. But next, let's try it fried. These ones here, I'm going to do something else with. I'm actually cut them into little slices like so. And we'll just put these slices into the butter. All right, so this looks pretty good. It got a nice gold color to it. This does have a lot of starch in it, similar to how potatoes are. So let's see uh, how that affected the flavor and uh, the texture of it. Well, you can't go wrong with frying almost anything. So that is actually really good. I would say um, I like that even better than when it's boiled and the flavor of it is even more like one of these when it's fried. Um, I'd say the flavor of the American ground nut is, if you were to give that to anybody, they would just think it was a potato. It is different, but, um, at a first glance, you wouldn't be able to tell. Digging deeper, it's maybe not as complex in flavor as a regular potato. It, is, it does have a little bit more of an earthiness to it, but the flavor is a little bit more simple. It's good, but it's simple. The American ground nut, like so many plants and so many fruits that I've covered on this channel that are native to where I live, unfortunately is something that um, is underutilized. It's something that is really good, has a really nice flavor, it can be used like a potato and nobody will be able to tell the difference and um, it's kind of a shame. It's kind of a shame because this is something that could easily grow here, there could be more of a market for it, but something that's really difficult to find. I did not realize that this was something that even existed until uh, Carol, who sent this to me, reached out to me. So um, if you have the opportunity of growing this or trying this yourself, check it out. And I think that's about it. So I'll see you all next time. I would like to give a very big shout out to Smarter Every Day, Bill T, and Bootbot. They are mega patrons over on Patreon.com. This is how I managed to keep this channel going, so it is a huge help to anyone watching who is interested in learning more about how you can help the channel and get some cool stuff in return, like early access to videos, exclusive videos. There's actually over a hundred of them already that you can get access to. Uh, there's a level where I'll send you stuff in the mail. You gotta check it out. There's more information about this down in the description below.